Okay. There we go. AA Beyond Belief is a podcast by, for, and about people who have found a secular path to sobriety in Alcoholics Anonymous. Oh, press the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> I do that sometimes. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is going to be a fun episode because I am here with Mikey J from the Oh God Group in Orlando, Florida, and he's been on the podcast before, but it's been a while. It's probably been maybe three years, maybe even more. Maybe it was one of our earlier episodes. Um, hard to believe, but we're coming up on five years of doing this. Can you believe that? I was number five on your podcast. <laughs> were, were you really? <laughs> I, was a, I was the fifth one, yeah. You are the fifth one. How about fifth that? <laughs> that, that was like five years ago. How about yeah. that? Awesome. Oh, man. So anyway, so Mikey's here to talk about um, his meaning, and he's got such a cool thing going on. Uh, he, you know, you emailed me and you told me that you learned a lot about, you know, how to avoid talking about God all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's totally God true. No God. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> In secular meetings, it's, we talk about right. God more right. than we ever did. And I, th- and I think it happens more on Zoom now than it did, you know, because when it was um, just our home groups, we all kind of got used to it after a while, you know, and you just right. weren't hearing. But now you've got all kinds of people coming out on Zoom, and it happens yeah. more often probably. And the um, thing I love is when they say, I never knew secular AA existed until <laughs> Zoom. They're like, this is a whole new world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change things, I think, uh, for, oh, yeah. for the better, hopefully. Mm-hmm. So where do we begin? Where do you want to begin, Mikey? Um, I'll tell you how the group started. Um, I had been sober in AA for about nine years or about eight years. And I did it all in traditional AA. And, you know, I, my first meeting was in 86. So I wasn't a stranger to it. But every time I saw the God parts, it never registered that it was even a thing. I just ignored it. You know, okay, cute. Yeah. Move on. You know, what? what's next? Um, but then I came out as an atheist because uh, I forget what it was that happened, but just something compelled me to say in a meeting that I was an atheist. And this was a group that I had been a part of for about eight years. They were my support group. They were my family. They were everything to me. And they all slowly turned their back. Um, they started not returning text messages. Sometimes they'd come up and say, are you really an atheist? Like it was like this incurable disease or that I was going to like cast a Satan spell on them or something. I don't know what it was, but they really kind of shunned me. And uh, I decided to uh, start a meeting where people that didn't have that uh, belief in a, in the supernatural could like actually go to a meeting. Mm -hmm. And it never occurred to me until that happened that other people that don't believe in God would have a problem in AA. Yeah. And since then, I've noticed that if I say in certain meetings, even if I just announce the meeting, I, I get like this response back. But anyway, uh, we, I started out and I wanted to call the group, um, group of drunks. Um, and in our inner group in the, um, the, uh, you know, the pamphlet where they show all the meetings, mm-hmm. The gay groups are lo- loca- are listed as mostly gay. The women's groups are listed as mostly women. So mm-hmm. I wanted them to say mostly agnostic. Okay. Because an agnostic's a better it's swallow it better. You can swallow it better. Yeah. Um and they wouldn't do it. They said, No, 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 we don't have atheist or agnostic meetings, you know, and I'm like, Well, gay meetings are you know, mm-hmm. that's so they can find their tribe and warn other people that that's the kind of meeting it is, mm-hmm. but they wouldn't do it. So I forced them to by changing the name to our mostly agnostic group of drunks. So that word was in there. Right. And I'll tell you, most in the early days, most of the people that came to us was because of the title of our group. Yep. And it just really uh, spring from there. Um, people really responded to it. Not at first, though, because we made a couple Mm -hmm. boo-boos. One thing, I put in the script that we're not here to bash religion. We're not here to (laughs) prophesize. um, And I, I, you know, made it like a point to say, you know, this is not – Right. Well, it turned in every time the topic would turn to God somehow. <laughs> yeah. And I would like, I even made the, the, the uh, topics 
so, <laughs> you know, oh, we're talking about uh, acceptance. Well, I can't accept there's not a God. I just said, we're crazy. <laughs> um, so what I ended up doing was I took every mention of anything supernatural out of the script. <laughs> right, right. Everything. I, I, I tried to make it. Not not like a regular meeting, but yeah. we still had a moment of silence to focus right. on why we're there. Um, the topics we I wrote sticks with topics yeah. on them. I like that. Yeah, they're they're nice topics. We talk about acceptance. We talk about you know drunk dreams, uh, uh-huh. doing the next right thing, and we became a just a good meeting. Um, in fact, at at oh my god, you you wouldn't necessarily know it was a agnostic meeting. Yeah. Our treasurer is a christian uh-huh. uh he just likes being in a meeting where it's not shoved down your throat right. and of course you know people want to talk about especially newcomers uh they want to ask questions but sure. as far as the meeting goes it's it's pretty pretty uh, low-key yeah well i think what makes this unique is we do a lot of stuff behind the scenes um we we're, we were the first to take digital donations um mm. we are an incredibly social group. Mm-hmm. Uh, we tend to get a younger crowd. Uh, a lot of those people that have that cool gene that can go, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> I can't do that, but they can. Um, uh, it, it just blossomed into this really, really cool group that we focus on newcomers and visitors. Yeah. Um, one weird thing, not, not weird, one thing that uh, I think is great is we get a lot of nursing students oh. that come to our meetings specifically because of the name and okay. they've heard that it's such a religious program. They want to see how we do it before they go or they're after they go. As observers, right? Yes, or, exactly. Okay, gotcha. Mm-hmm. And we're an open meeting. Uh, we keep it open basically sure. because, you know, some of us, don't have problems or have problems other than alcohol, Mm -hmm. but there is no place for them to recover. Mm -hmm. So we kind of, you know, stay in the solution as much as we can. Um, We, (laughs) we are a little non-traditional though, because like we bought a big spin wheel that we put the topics on and then on each spoke of the wheel, not only is there a topic, but there's a restaurant. So that's the name of the restaurant that we end up at as as we uh, turn the, yeah, it's fun. I think the, the one thing I'm proudest about uh, our meeting is the recovery expansion project where yeah, we I remember kind you of talking about that. We had to, uh, we had to stop it during the zoom crisis mm-hmm. or the, <laughs> the Corona crisis, right, right. Um, <laughs> the zoom, uh, because we would overtake their meeting. Like uh, we went to wow. one in Orlando and it was like 10 people, but then 20 of us ascended onto the <laughs> oh, meeting and right. it was, <laughs> they were like, they didn't know what to do. <laughs> They're like, where are you people coming from? Right. <laughs> That's fine. But uh, yeah, we go to a meeting with the group, yeah. uh, or we did, just so we can field questions for newcomers, or uh-huh. or just show them, look, it, we're here. We're not mm-hmm. going to steal your babies. Uh, we're good people, and because we're very, very uh, involved in the service structure of AA, yeah. we're a good neighbor. Right. Um, we exactly. really are. Uh, what started as kind of misgivings, we have people sending us their sponsees that may have a problem with the yeah. second step. And it's been pretty, pretty awesome as far as the meeting goes. Um, yeah. And then uh, we started the online meeting at uh, in the rooms dot com. Mm-hmm. I remember was, that. Boy, you were like one of the first secular meetings to go online, I think. Yeah. yeah. Not the um, first. Yeah, probably. It yeah. was because there wasn't, I was just looking through things and I, someone turned me on to, uh, in the rooms yeah. basically cause I was going on vacation and I wanted yeah. to get to a meeting, but I didn't think I was going to be able to. So I went to these meetings and they were super God heavy. So I said, I called the, or I emailed the guy back and forth and yeah, we were able to get that meeting. Um, and I learned a lot from it. One thing I learned is that, uh, it kind of took on a life of its own. And now we have nothing to do with it. They changed oh, no. the name. They mm-hmm. they have a whole section uh, or a whole thing. But there are two secular meetings there that I had a hand in, which was the NA and the um, AA one. Mm-hmm. And I know that those were meetings that carried our message to people who would never enter AA. Yeah. Just like our group, we don't. We're not. We're kind of like the door that a lot of people come through because they hear it's very religious, and once they see it's not as bad as they thought, they start to branch out into uh, traditional AA. Right, right. You know, they're not all 
uh, sticking in our doors. They're yeah. actually spreading out. So yeah, yeah, that's cool. yeah. That. And you know, I'm also remember when you said that you did the expansion project also because you wanted people to know that you know where you might be in some other city someday, and there's not going to be a secular group. You need to know what that AA other AA meetings are not going to kill you. They're not exactly. <laughs> yeah, and because you and I, I think, grew up in AA. Yeah in yeah. traditional AA and I still love going to meetings, especially out of town. Yeah. And the, the one thing I think that is the most important thing, both in our, uh, the early online meeting and our meeting is that we remain neutral about God. Yeah. Our topics are not about the third step, yeah. our topics. And, and believe me, there's plenty of time to go over that. In fact, sure. in our zoom meeting, which I'll talk about in a minute, but in our Zoom meeting, we have a breakout room at the mm -hmm. end of the meeting mm -hmm. where we assign newcomers into this room with some long timers and people that were, are willing to sponsor so that they can uh, you know, ask questions like that. How do you do the third step and, right. and stuff like that? But basically we were just a really good meeting where the God topic just doesn't yes. come up much. Yes, you know, uh, and now my group here in KC, I think we've, we got to that point um, before we went online, and I, to be honest with you, I haven't been going to the online meetings very often, but I hear that they've grown a lot because you're getting people from other areas come in. But we kind of got that way. But I think you're smart to avoid the the declaration of not being a godly group or whatever at the <laughs> beginning. Because, I, I mean, we read um, the agnostic preamble, which really isn't written all that well. And then we read the AA preamble. But the AA preamble is really enough. It says it all, you know. It's secular too. Yeah, it's totally secular. <laughs> and then all you need to do is just go on with your meeting. And uh, so, yeah, we've gotten to where we're pretty much um, neutral on that. You don't just don't hear a lot of discussion about it. it never comes up. Um, but I, I, I think it might come up online more often than not. When it does come up in our meetings, I almost always cringe. I just like, oh, please don't but it happens. Yeah, no, it's it's usually a newcomer or yeah. someone that has just stepped out of the closet as far as their non-belief. Yeah, 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 I know. And it's like, you, you do have to give space for those people. I mean, because I was one. I mean, I, I, I remember, um, you know, I was like 25 years at this home group before I realized I was, before I realized I was an atheist and started telling people about it. And it was really a difficult time. It really was. You know, it was a difficult time. I, you know, before I found that there were other people like me out there, um, I didn't know if I was going to be able to stay in AA, you know, um, because I was kind of getting, getting a hard time in my home group. But anyway, that, that all has changed now over the years. Um, we're just so well accepted, just like your group is. I mean, we just don't, it just seems, it's, it's, seems like we're normal now. It just seems like we're just an average, normal AA group. <laughs> In some places, I'm in Florida. Yeah. Our, our meeting is in Florida, so they still say the Lord's Prayer. And yeah. I have had one one person in particular. I was in a meeting, and we had just added a Friday night meeting to our uh, thing. We had a, a Sunday and a Friday now, uh -huh. and I just announced it. it. It was one of those meetings where you'd go through half the meeting, and then you do the secretary report, and then you'd finish up with the rest yeah. of yeah. the meeting. Well, during this secretary report i just said hey there's a new uh group called our mostly agnostic group of drunks it meets on friday well the chairperson everyone in the room all of a sudden got it tense and it was one of those meetings where you pick a topic out of a basket right every single topic turned to god for some reason right. after me and it i was like okay the well this is you know it's okay the chairperson picked up his big book and said i believe in the god of abraham oh, and shit. i i mean he just went off directly to me and i swear oh, yeah. when i shared everyone was like oh that's great share but then i said that and i felt so uncomfortable i had to leave yeah. right after the meeting and go to chick-fil-a <laughs> um and and do something because i felt so uh really backed into a corner that. yeah yeah, I had kind of, I didn't have a, uh, an experience exactly like that, but something somewhat similar. Just a guy giving me a really weird, um, threatening look. It's really I, it was during the Lord's Prayer, and I wasn't saying the Lord's Prayer. This is like, I think the day when I I announced to the group I'm leaving, I'm starting an agnostic group, blah blah blah. And this one guy, man, he just kind of stared at me, and it's like really weird because even if I wasn't looking at him, I could feel his stare coming <laughs> on me. You know, it's just kind of weird yeah. how you could do that. Uh -huh. And I looked at him, he gave me this really scary look, but 
that was the most threatening thing. I kind of wish, in retrospect, I would have gone over and say, what the fuck's wrong with you? Right. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you can touch me. It's, <laughs> I'm not going to burst into flames. So, um, so you want to talk about your Zoom meeting? Yeah. Um, when did Zoom... you guys, first, when did you guys go online on Zoom? Did you, did you have to shut down in March, like most well, of us? Yeah, it was in March. We we actually were going. We had every intention of doing it socially distanced. We were. Uh, we had two meetings where we put the chairs all six feet apart. Uh, everyone had to wear a mask. Um, we were very very hypercritical, but we all are hyper careful. Right. Uh, but we all agreed that the online or that the face to face meeting was incredibly valuable. So. I, we asked, we did a poll, does everyone want to keep doing meetings? They all did, but then the next day, <laughs> the, yeah. um, our, uh, the place where we meet said, we can't meet there anymore. Yeah. Um, so we, we went online, and because I had experience with the online meetings from intherooms.com, mm -hmm. I knew a couple tricks, and because I'm just a theatrical person anyway, right. it's really turned into... Uh, I've been to a lot of meetings and I've seen a lot of gimmicks yeah. and I know that there's things that people naturally love. Uh, a lot of times it's inside jokes. Uh, other times it's like, like the shootout meeting where it's, it's a gimmick, but it yeah. draws people in. Yeah. So, uh, oh, and I didn't even mention the website. We, we have a website, um, oh my God org, and that has been central to pretty much everyone's recovery. Um, unbeknownst to us uh therapists and counselors yeah. and probation officers and nursing students they all refer them it's to our sense. meeting because of our website they just yeah. put a google search you know yeah. atheist orlando or whatever yeah and uh so we have a t you're on that list or you're on the website you're linked right. to it we have the little uh the little step book Mm -hmm. Um, he gave us permission to put the whole thing on there. So we have every alternative step we have, uh, we, we have a member section too, that's, uh, uh, password protected. Right. So that's where we can really say, oh, there's an, a secular overeaters anonymous now, mm -hmm. which did you know there's a secular overeaters anonymous meeting now, or like, I did not know that. Yeah. Um, but we can put that on right. the password side so we don't break the tradition. Right. And there's some things, you know, this is an opinion thing. A lot of times I've been to um, secular meetings where they, they have a different set of uh, like, like six steps or they have oh, a, yeah, a yeah. different version. Yeah. yeah. We kind of were on the fence about that, or I, I kind of wasn't sure what to do. So we put all of that on our website and just let it be. Let but as far as our group, uh, we use, uh, we use, if we use literature, we use conference approved literature. Uh -huh. And that's actually a trick so that no one comes in with a poem or yeah. they have an, oh, uh, an yeah. article from psychology today yeah. that they want to yeah. share. I, I oh, have no, actually sorry. seen that happen at our meetings before we had some, <laughs> coming. it's like it was some really weird book, you know, like Walt Whitman or some damn thing. It was like, yeah, yeah I can make a topic out of this, but it's not, it's not yeah, really. if I tried real hard, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it makes sense to them, but not to everyone, <laughs> but like I said, uh, a lot of what worked for me might kill you. Yeah. So we have uh, a very open-minded group, and I think that having a variety of meetings like you do now because of the pandemic is amazing That's because amazing. you can find your people. You know, you can go anywhere over the world. You have the, the list that we help update, the, um, mm -hmm. uh, the secular meetings. That thing is like got a, you know, almost 200 meetings. Oh, that's really amazing. That now you're talking about the Google Sheet? Yeah, but, the Google yeah, Sheets. Yeah, we'll definitely link that on this podcast when we post it because that's a really amazing resource. It, it really is. And it's been uh, surprising uh, how many meetings we, in the very beginning of that list, I used to go to each meeting and then verify it to cool. make sure it's a real meeting. Yeah. I put a little check I mark. when you did that and you would, you would make comments every once in a while that you attended the meeting or, or that you needed to, a password or, or it was always some, some. Yeah, it was always something, <laughs> but uh, I, there got to be too many meetings. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, yeah. I couldn't do yeah. it. I have people in the, um, in our service thing going through those and every now and then I'll get a, Oh, can you change this? Or yeah, that meeting was great. It, it works and yeah. stuff like that. But I think that's the coolest thing in the whole world. Oh, Just, it's really amazing. Yeah. I bet there's, God, I wonder how many there are. I mean, I know that the face to face meetings were about 500 worldwide and I'm sure that we must have at least that many online meetings now scattered around. 
Oh yeah. yeah. I yeah. think I think it actually says the bottom line is two fifty five, but I know there's spaces and yeah. uh, stuff in there. But uh, yeah, I'd be curious to know exactly how many there are now. Yeah, and and always more. Yeah, you know, you know what's weird about um, those meetings now, the, listing them. The whole thing about COVID and and how AA has gone online. So it's like now um, geography doesn't really matter anymore. And like, it's right. like AA was organized by geography. You have your, your district is in Missouri and if you're in Missouri, <laughs> you're in the West or whatever, yep. you know? And, um, and if you're in Kansas city, your Kansas city central office will take care yeah. of you. area three right. location, well, five district well, two. You know? <laughs> yeah, none of that matters. You know, it's like, uh -huh. like we're, we're the online meetings. It's like, you almost need just one big place for just all the online meetings to be, you know? Yeah. Um, and it was like, so all these, it was kind of really difficult in the very beginning because people wanted to go to these online meetings and there's no place where they were all listed. And that's because groups were kind of scrambling because they were like, you know, oh my God, we have to find a place to meet. We need to meet online. They just put these meetings together for their own purposes, right? But then it turns out that people from all around wanted to, you know, go to these meetings. Yeah. And a lot of the, um, like, there's a great one uh, called Rational Recovery. It's, uh, I forget, it. Nathan runs it. It's a really, really good meeting. And they have uh, kind of the same setup where they have the readings online, they do little sound cues and stuff like that. It makes it fun. Yeah. Um, and our, our online meeting, like I said, we, it got so big that we kept hitting the 100 people mark where you couldn't add any more people. Right. So I, I was on a, a New York City's intergroup site and it said, hey, if you want oh, to start a meeting, join us and, and for free, we'll put you on that enterprise account. Cool. So we can have up to 300 people at <laughs> all. There you go. There's an example there. of geography not mattering anymore. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Uh, one thing though, uh, and it's just for our group and it's a little secret between you and me. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, the meetings got so big and so popular that we had to have a secret meeting right. that we do with just locals. Yeah. You whereas, know, you know, just that. us. That's what they did in Toronto. And I oh, would be good. surprised if our meetings in Kansas City get that way, we'd have to do the same thing. Because it's like, um, yeah, after a while, you don't even recognize the group anymore. It's just completely different. But Yeah. And a lot of newcomers mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people. But for some reason, uh, maybe the way that our philosophy is or whatever, but... Um, we don't get a lot of the, the God topics like you think you would mm. from newcomers. Mm. Uh, they're all, it's just, they're very grateful to. Are they newcomers that have never been to AA before? A lot of them are. Yeah. Um, which yeah. I was surprised, uh, well, not surprised just because I knew about online meetings, but in uh, the beginning, everyone was like, oh, you can't get to physical meetings. They're going to all relapse. And uh, I was like, no, it's, it's very much like a regular meeting. And now there are people that have only one guy in particular, Marcus, he's only come to our meetings mm -hmm. and he's picking up a six month chip. Uh, yeah. He picked one up Monday. That's, yeah. He's never been to an actual AA meeting other than online. And yeah. to, I know me, we've got some people like that too. It's, and it's, it's really, um, it's interesting because um, alcoholism and drug addiction is going up now because of COVID and because of people being isolated and everything. And then the number of um, availability to meetings is also probably increasing for people and making it easier if they have the internet, you know, to, to get to a meeting. And uh, so I think that there are a lot of people that are coming to their first meeting. It'll be interesting, like five years from now, reading grapevine articles of people who went to their first right. meeting on Zoom and it was a secular meeting or something like that. <laughs> ah, run out of the room. <laughs> uh, that's, you know, if you think about it, a newcomer can sit in a meeting almost 24 hours a day. Yeah. I, I mean, you could, as a newcomer, you want to get as many meetings, they say 90 meetings in 90 right. days. I don't have to drive anywhere. I don't have to stand awkwardly by the, the coffee machine and try to make friends. You can sit in a meeting and hear the message uh, constantly. And I, I, now you hear a lot of the AA groups, they don't want to go back to the regular locations. Know, they want to stay online in their I know, underwear. It's interesting. Some people are like, um, they like the online meetings so much that they're okay with just being online all the time. And then um, I think we're going to have hybrid meetings too. I know we already do have hybrid meetings. There are some groups around here that, have, that are meeting in person again, but they're also keeping their online meetings. So you got the hybrids. Yeah, there's, uh, I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, the people have been very, very clear that they do not want us to 
stop these meetings. Um, and, and on that particular meeting, um, there's a lot that goes with it. We're really obnoxious. We have sound effects. We have, uh, uh, we do a Star Wars night where everything is themed to Star Wars. Uh, it's just it's just a fun group, yeah. and it's gotten so popular um, that people don't want it to leave. And we used the same nights that our meeting meets. We yeah. meet in Orlando on Mondays and Fridays. We had to add an extra one on Wednesdays, and now when we go back, we don't know what we're going to do with those two meetings. We don't want to have them on days that people could come to our face to face. Right. But we can't let these people not have a meeting. Yeah. So it's, we're kind of still on the fence on what to do about that. I don't think it's going to take a while, but. Yeah. So you, would you like to demo some of the, some of the uh, stuff that you do in your, at your meeting? Yeah, I can. I'll give you a little, uh, now, now for yeah. listeners, I, I, yeah, we may never show this. You may never see this. Yeah, <laughs> you might. It's it's possible. Once I, uh, I'll share my screen here. Okay. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, that. That's your website right there. That's the main website. Yeah, that's the omagod.org. Oh um, because we had the online meeting, I already knew some things could be done, like screen sharing and readings, mm -hmm. and you know stuff like that. Um, our meeting starts right here, and uh, the first thing is the preamble, which right. uh, someone reads. Right after the preamble, we just click this button here, and the website comes back up. Mm -hmm. We talk a bit about our newcomer tab up at the top, um, and then you know you get the don't panic. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a t uh, there's a test to see if you're an alcoholic or not. The question and answers, uh, that kind of stuff. The Godward pamphlets on there. And then uh, we click to our seventh tradition, which is the uh, Venmo and PayPal accounts. And we made it animated and it blinks. So, Mike, and... did you see all this stuff once you're in the meeting? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everyone, everyone sees all the, um, the graphics and everything. Um, like I said, we, it takes four people to run the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, the, the number one is the chair. And when we were dealing, I don't know if you've talked about Zoom bombers on uh here before i haven't i haven't talked about zoom bombers oh it's boy thing, uh, we could talk they, about it. <laughs> yeah it's a thing uh the, if you if you know a zoom bomber uh you'll know why we had to take so many precautions yes yes but uh we do this and then um let's see the chair yeah uh, uh the chairperson asks the backup dancer that's me the or the one that runs the controls do you have any other announcements so i do, 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 do. i talk my <laughs> announcements and then uh the meeting starts uh, once the meeting starts, oh, let me play my interest music. That's yes. my favorite part of the whole thing. Um, but, uh, because of Zoom bombing, we had to do a, th a few things. Uh, first of all, we set the chat room only to the host. So oh. Zoom bombers, their job, if they decide to do it, is to make as much ruckus in, our, in a meeting as possible. Right. They say horrible things. They are extremely racist. They really really are obnoxious however and I, I i i i will send you the the uh chat some guy when it very first started he sent me a message on the chat and said i came in here to say lots of swear words but you're doing something really important his dad was an alcoholic and wow. this zoom bomber gave me the twitter feed of where they got the zoom bomber uh stuff Oh. So it was really cool that someone, you know, went out of their way. Hey, I'm a total jerk, but for you, <laughs> I'm not going to be this one time. But uh, we had to ch uh, change the chat so only the backup dancer sees the wall of swear words. Okay. Uh, we, we make it so that everyone is muted when they come in so they can't say anything bad. We have a bouncer that watches each person as they come in and they watch their icon. If they turn it on to a virtual background that has porn or right. Hitler or whatever, we automatically boot them. Um, okay. We set it up so that uh, uh, there's just all kinds of different things that we've done to make sure that no one notices uh, the Zoom bombers and we've become very good at it. Interesting. Um, this, so yeah, you, it, are you put them in a different room? Is that what you're doing? No, you remove them. Uh, like, there's two, there's two options. You can either put them into the waiting room right. or you can kick them out completely. Right. The 
the trick is you can't let people rename themselves because what yeah. they'll do, they'll come in and they'll see the chairperson's name is Cat, yeah. so or whoever, and they'll change their name to Cat. Right. Sign out and sign back in, and you think it's her, so you're not going to kick her out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have to do that. Um, but anyway, uh, that's why it takes a, a bouncer, a timer, a backup dancer, right. and you a actually chairperson. actually catch them before they do their thing. Oh, they, they start. As soon okay, as we start. hear them, they outline in yellow, and we're all – I mean, all four of us are looking <laughs> for them, so we get them out pretty quick. Okay. This is the uh, – we have a whole bunch of different uh, – introductions mm -hmm. uh this is my favorite orchestra of penguins i'll probably take the job for the hell of it <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, one and all, to our mostly agnostic group of drunks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'll show you this, and, and you can edit this out. Okay. But this is, uh, this is, we have one person in our group uh, really loves Star Wars, oh. uh, Marcus. And we did this for him. And it was actually a, uh, one of my, someone I was working with with the steps, he's, he's like, you know, you can do this online with this Star Wars thing. So. This is the, you can edit this quiet time okay. out, but. Chips are Star Wars based. The I mean, it's just we just kind of went yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's so. Um, yeah, it's it's uh it's been such a blessing. And then the outros are uh anyway. Let me see if I can do this quick. So we have the seven tradition. Um, we have a time flower that drops when it's ten till mm -hmm. uh, to let everyone know that we're gonna close everything down for burning mm -hmm. desires. So this is our little time flower mm -hmm. that makes. Oh well, it's time to wrap that up. Um, and then uh, after or during the meeting at the end, we do chips. And these are, let me refresh that there. Yep. Um, that's Victor E. You know who Victor E is? Yes, yes. He was. Uh, I have him everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the old grapevine guy. Um, I guess he's still on the grapevine, isn't he? Uh, no, it, it was uh, it was Victor E. And he was always, uh, it was a cartoon strip. And he was always outside of a bar about to walk right. in and then something yeah. would happen. Then they got rid of him and they had Oliver Twist, like oh. Oliver Twist, Oliver Twist. And then they kind of went all different directions. But only people that have had at least, you know, were born in the 60s, I guess. Right. They, they remember Victor and every now, oh, that's Victor. So if, uh, let's say someone wants to pick up a three-month chip, we have this uh, animation. Woo! Hello, man. Hello, man. 
So, you, oh, chip, chip, hooray. That's great. And, uh, oh, someone here is picking up 10 months. Chip, chip, hooray! <laughs> they get a different one. Um, if they're celebrating a anniversary, like a year, like their first year, they get this one. Congratulations! <laughs> Don't get cocky, though. Still just a day at a time. <laughs> and, and then, uh, you know, we have uh, birthdays. If someone has a birthday, we can do something silly like this. Mm -hmm. um, we have, uh, let's see, um, all kinds of different things. And then the the uh, we have just a basic, um, you know, oh, I'm pregnant for the fourth time. Well, congratulations. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing like that. And then. Yeah. Um, at the end, we have our moment of silence for the drunk that will never stumble through our doors. Mm -hmm. And we have someone come up and read the uh, responsibility statement. And this mm -hmm. is that uh, graphic. Yeah. They read the, uh, the uh, responsibility statement. And then we have the end of our meeting. And we ended of <laughs> uh, two different ways. Um, Victor jumps up and we say, you know, thanks and, uh, for coming and everything. And then they say, Hey, uh, uh, backup dancer, can you play us out? And we do, uh, you know, this kind of, this is when we're feeling particularly stupid. <laughs> we break all everyone in the, in the thing. So anyway, that's, uh, that's our, our meeting. And I think the best part about our meeting is that, um, during the meeting, if somebody says that they are uh, struggling or they're brand new to recovery or, or secular AA, uh, what we do is we utilize the breakout feature on Zoom. And as the meeting goes on, you invite these people to this meeting after the meeting. It's, we call it coffee chat. It's like an after party. Um, they when the meeting is ended, everyone that we've assigned gets an invitation that says come to our after party. And it's just a place that we, we have it for like 20 minutes. Um, it's a place where people can freely answer questions, yeah. uh, get a sponsor, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's also other people have started to use our, uh, our things. Other groups mm -hmm. have, uh, you know, their own kind of chips. We have mm -hmm. the, uh, UK does one chips with the uh, white chip says that they're um, the UK hotline number uh -huh. and this is all free and anyone can do it. Anyone can pick up our chips. We, we do it for all kinds of different groups. Uh -huh. and, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's great. It's, yeah. a, it's a fun thing in our meeting. Yeah, man, you, you are really talented <laughs> and it, I, it's nice that you make it it's nice that we make it fun. Um, that's one thing I, I've always liked about AA is there's always, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of deadly serious stuff that goes on in meetings, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of humor. And um, I think it's important. I think it's important. Someone, someone said, they said, I, I don't know about this. Uh, when I first came to this meeting, I didn't know with all your, uh, you know, fancy animation and yeah. sound effects. He said, but this meeting has been a really good meeting oh, yeah. because that kind of stuff is on the outside. Sure. But when the meeting starts, Absolutely. it's a meeting. Absolutely. And it's, I think uh, it's just amazing. And I've been to other meetings that are kind of like that. Like I said, yeah. the uh, rational recovery one is, is very mm -hmm. lighthearted, but the meat of the, of the exactly. meeting exactly is, that's, yeah true yeah, aa that's that's true yeah and that's that's a hard thing to describe unless you've actually experienced it but i understand it completely i understand it completely yep. in fact i the actually the the um the traditional group that i went to for like 25 years was kind of like that it was like a real raucous group uh, it was an all men's group and everything and they were real raucous and they were you know um they would you know just jokes all the time and everything but there was also underneath all that a deadly a serious, you know, we're serious about recovery and helping people. And it's just kind of a weird mixture of <laughs> yeah. goofiness. Well, and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're at, at first you're like, well, I don't know, this is serious, but then it gets comfortable. Right. It's like Rocky horror picture show. Sometimes <laughs> I remember I went to a, a meeting where the, the chairperson would say, um, none of us want to admit complete defeat and everybody stomps their feet like this. Right, right, uh, right, it, right. it was, it's just fun stuff. Yeah. But like I said, the seriousness is in the meat of the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what, this is, this is something that is helping more alcoholics than ever before. Yeah. Um, people are, 
uh, are really staying sober with these meetings. Yeah. And we may do silly things at our regular meetings, like the spin wheel for topics and sure. all that kind of stuff. But uh, really, this is about staying sober. And mm -hmm. because we focus ourselves so much on newcomers and visitors and people asking questions, we really feel like we're doing something for another person. And that is right, how you stay sober, you know? That's great. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of people getting sober now. I think there's a lot of people that are finding AA online, you know, and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. And yeah, your focus on the newcomer, you've always done that. And, yeah. uh, you know, and you well, it's, it's not even about fitting in with AA as a whole. Yes. Um, I, I, I really feel that uh, regular AA meetings, uh, someone said you should get a six pack when you come into recovery. And that's a pack of friends, six friends yeah. that you can call at any time and, and stay sober with. Mm -hmm. And going to just one meeting is not going to give you that because yeah. we're not always going to be there. Um, but it's, like I said, it's, it's definitely a, um, so when a are wonderful your thing. Meetings? We have them a uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and then we have a private meeting that we made because the other meeting was getting 150 people. So yeah. now we are, we have a secret meeting, but right. uh, those are the big, the two big meetings. And now they want to add another one. And I'm like, you know how it's hard? Like 10% uh, of the people do 90% of the work exactly. in AA. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have to get four trusted servants <laughs> to run our meeting. And it was hard just getting one. So, yeah. Uh, and man, I mean, uh, also, the tech skills in AA sometimes aren't so great, but and, and, and I find myself like um, when we set up the Zoom meetings in the beginning, it was like, you mean you guys don't know how to use Zoom? You guys don't know how to use Zoom? Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like dragging people into 2007. <laughs> it's like, okay, which I think is actually great because my my doctor appointments uh -huh. are now I can be in my underwear and, and <laughs> exactly you know exactly. as long as I got a shirt on, it's Water fine. Pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, the area convention for AA is yeah. done online yeah. this time. Ours and is done online. I just went to one this last weekend. Think about... Actually, we did it hybridly. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking about the people that are, you know, once a year they have to fly to New York, stay yeah. in a hotel, I know. food, and you yeah. can do the whole thing sitting in your I know. house. I yeah. just see a kind of you wonder shift. If, you wonder if they might start doing that because it's truly very expensive to send a delegate to New York. Absolutely. Thousands and thousands. I mean, I think our area would put up like $4,000 and that didn't even pay half of it, I don't think, because the general service office pays a large portion of it as well. This is one thing I didn't mention uh, before. We take digital donations. Now, when yeah. I was in, or when we were in um, brick and mortar meetings, I guess, uh, we had Venmo cards and we would pass them out in a purse. We'd pass the purse and then you could take out a Venmo thing and scan it with your uh, phone. Yeah. Well, our, our donations tripled by doing yeah. that because I, I, at a meeting, you know, you reach out and you put a dollar in. So many people you don't, don't carry cash. I hardly ever carry cash, you know? Yeah. And, but uh, we, we were really bad about in our meeting. We never did get that. We actually had one of those scanner things you could put on your phone, but I never did. I never brought it in so people could use it. And yeah, I bet, but I could see how your donations would go quite a bit because I'm sure a lot of people would like to give a buck or two, but they just, I don't carry cash. What are you talking about? You know? Yeah. Um, because we've had it on our website, every now and then we'll get someone like $162 and 15 cents. And you're like, where'd that come from? And you know, it's someone's sponsor saying you got to donate that money yeah. that you stole. You can't give it back. So just give it to an yeah. AA thing. Yeah. yeah. And we, uh, because we show those QR codes, we have, we just gave a, a large donation to our inner group right. for no other reason than here. Yeah. We got love it. you. That's you know, we have it. We'll give it. That's good, you know, because I know that um, I know that some of the I've actually heard. I don't know if this, I don't know how I don't know if it's true, so I should probably look into it. I just say I heard, but I guess that um, AA World Services GSO their donations have gone down since all of this COVID stuff has gone on, and so maybe mm. if you had more online groups that were contributing, that would kind of help offset that a little bit. Well, we, we do have a, a, a clubhouse, and this is an interesting dynamic. Uh, when the clubhouse house closed for COVID, all these meetings went online. Yeah. Well, when they started to open again, they wanted to shut down the meetings, and there was a big resistance to that. 
um, because people like going to the thing and or the Zoom meetings, but more importantly, they didn't want to go to a crowd. Right. Well, long story short, the clubhouse now is completely open. They don't let people wear, or no one has to wear a mask. Uh, they don't socially distance. Hmm. And they are just kind of squeezing the Zoom meetings. Like they changed the password to all the Zoom meetings, but wouldn't publish it. So the only reason or the only time you know that the meeting is there is if you were here before. I don't know how they work it. But the, the problem is, is that those Zoom meetings, because you're in your bedroom or living room casually, right. uh, they don't put money in. Uh, and and they they just say like oh you can write a check to or ah. you can Venmo this and they give a link that no one can copy. Ah. I mean it's uh, and I think if they if they really pushed for we need donations yes. uh, to help out with the service structure, I think it would yes. they'd be more willing to keep yep. some of those Zoom meetings or make and hybrids like this you said. COVID thing is going to change. I mean AA has I, it's it's really interesting because not only have our individual AA people sometimes low tech and I hate, I hate to generalize, but at least in my group, it seems to be the case. Um, but <laughs> kind of AA at large has kind of, kind of been kind of, kind of like, Ooh, I don't know about that internet thing. <laughs> but now you're kind of right. to where I think that we're kind of being forced to, to embrace this technology. And like my group now, but nobody ever heard of zoom. They didn't know how to use it. Now everybody's just, you know, second nature, you know? Yep. I think uh, with the nuns, the uh, the uh, the non-religious nuns, yeah. as they call yeah. them, yeah. Uh, that group is getting so big that secular AA is oh, absolutely yeah. going to be where they find their yeah. footing. And because they're growing up in coronavirus age, uh, I think this is going to be this is going to accelerate uh, AA into the future. Um, and there'll be two. They'll hopefully they'll all come together as one. But uh, there's going to be two different uh styles of recovery very interesting i'm going to get a little observation here first of all observation number one at my home group here in kc one thing i started noticing was a lot of people who had never been to aa before and so and they're and they're not they don't really consider themselves atheists or agnostics or whatever they just don't really care they don't like it's not my thing it's not, it's not a it's not something to even think about and so it's like normal for them just to have a meeting where there isn't a lot of praying and chanting and stuff like that so they, they don't even know what are you talking about religious and non-religious they, they don't know um but another observation which i find really interesting this goes to zoom my area assembly now they started changing when they were doing in person. Like they were like Lord's Prayer all the time. So when I first started going to the assembly, it was like every time you went to a um, a meeting, a, uh, a committee meeting, they'd always end the damn thing with the Lord's Prayer, right? So you, if you went to like, and they're like an hour long meeting. So if you went like to three or four meetings in a row, I mean, it's constantly Lord's Prayer all freaking day long, and that's what they would do. Well, after a while, they started some some of the chairs of the meeting started doing the um, responsibility statement instead. Anyway, what I'm noticing now on the Zoom meetings that we do for our committee meetings, it's just like they just close the meeting. It's like no one thinks about doing the prayer or anything so often, and it kind of makes you it makes you wonder. Hmm, it's like. <laughs> Why are we doing this? <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you've ever heard a meeting when they all try to do the prayer, but oh, yeah, because of the delay, it. it's like, hi, 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 That's why. All over the place. That's why. I think that's it. <laughs> These people are going to go to normal meetings and be like, what do you mean we have to do something at the end? <laughs> Hold hands? What's that? Yeah. yeah. It's definitely good. The, yeah, and like I said, those kind of those kind of things are important. Yeah, being in a face to face meeting will, in my opinion, always trump Zoom. And I, excuse me for using that word, but uh, it will always uh, be better than Zoom right. because of that uh, that face to face yes. interaction. Yes. The fact it's, that you can give them a hug or or yeah. hand you their phone number, pull them so aside. Facial expression when you're talking. And you can see the concern in someone's eyes or something like that. You know, the they, knowing nod. Mm -hmm. This where people are, are doing that knowing nod. And it's so cool in AA because someone will say something and you get it. Yeah. You know and you know that everyone else gets it. That yeah. doesn't translate yeah. very well over Zoom. Right. Right. And the, the laughter. I, I yeah, miss the laughter. hearing the the laughter. Right. You know, the the it's 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 different, but it's definitely something that I can adapt to. Yes. And I really think, like you, I think this is going to be a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think so, yeah. too. How long I have you really been sober? Don't... You've been sober since, like, Moses. Oh, since 1988. Oh, my God. 
I went yeah. to my first meeting uh, when I was 16. It was in 86. Yeah. If I had stayed sober then, I don't know where I'd, I'd probably be, you know, floating on the clouds. Just like, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. It's like, I, 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 first of all, I can't believe I'm as old as I am. And then that sober, that <laughs> one, but whatever it happens, happens to the best of I us. Just, I just turned 50. I, I feel your pain there. <laughs> yeah, things are falling off. <laughs> oh, look yeah, at that yeah, mole. Exactly. <laughs> things start changing, man. It's like, ooh. <laughs> uh -huh. But change is good, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Change is good. It is. Well, is uh, there anything that we didn't cover that you think we should talk about? Um, well, we, I could talk an hour and a half and two hours about AA. Uh, yeah. I think, um, I think uh, we've covered everything as far as, uh, you know, the, the meetings and AA. I think the, the driving point uh, would be that there is diversity in AA, yeah. Yeah. and that is a good thing. A good thing. Um, you know, the only time I really say anything in regular meetings about being an atheist is when they read the fucking, oh, excuse right. me, the we agnostics thing right. where it's just bad arguments. And, sure. you know, you're like, okay, this is not, and that's not what this is. Yes. But yeah. pretty much I, I'm uh, pretty comfortable no matter where I go. And if someone does it a little bit different, uh, you know, recovery has taught me that, you know, keep an open mind about it and uh, read your different. audience. There's a huge amount of diversity, even among the secular meetings. Like I went to a meeting, um, a secular meeting in Cleveland. It was nothing like our meeting in Kansas City. You know, I was, I don't know if it was actually Cleveland, somewhere in Ohio. But anyway. They always like, do it bad. <laughs> they always do it wrong. And no matter where you go, they do it wrong. <laughs> yeah. But they were, they were totally, they called, they were free thinkers meeting, but they, they, they read the big book and all this stuff. And it just seems like a regular, you know, whatever. But, but yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of diversity. And I think that is a great strength. I think it's a great strength for, just society as a whole, but for, for sure for AA and zoom brings that out. And what is really interesting. I've talked to, I talked to Angela about this is now that, now that geography no longer matters, um, people are getting to know AA in a bigger sense. I mean, they're getting exposed to more diversity, right? They're getting, right. They're getting exposed to other views than just the, the 12 or 15 people in their home group. Like it's happening yeah. in our group. It's like, like um, Bree went to Austin and uh, no, didn't go to Austin, but went to a meeting and that was an Austin meeting. And, and she really liked the newcomers meeting that they had there. So she started one for our group in Kansas city. You know, that was, she was awesome. influenced by the Austin group and had it not been for this, she never would have met him. You know, let me just say about Austin, I started a meditation meeting based on a meeting I went to when I was at the secular AA convention yeah. in Austin. They have kick-ass meetings out there. Okay. And a lot of times, uh, like I, I do a, a, a meditation uh, meeting over Zoom with a lot of my pigeons because I want to meditate. So yeah. I made a meeting so that I have to meditate. It's the same thing with, with all of these things. Every time you reach out you're helping someone else as much as you're helping yourself yeah and i just i just think it's i love aa i do <laughs> <laughs> well this was a fun podcast thank you mikey yeah thank you thank you it's so good to talk to you and i love oh, your yeah. take it's just uh it's just so awesome and that's it that's another episode of aa beyond belief the podcast thank you so much for listening we're going to put up some links to uh, how, so you can find Mikey's uh, meetings Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, at 7? Seven? 7, yep. <laughs> 7 o'clock. And you'll have to figure out what that is in your time zone. That's getting to be a new <laughs> Exactly. <hobby. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway. We were talking. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back again for another episode. <laughs> Bye. I believe the podcast. Bye-bye. Bye. I just wanted to say there's uh, a meeting that I just heard in Thailand at uh -huh. 1 a.m. that there it's noon, but at 1 a.m. there's supposed to be a really good meeting in Thailand. How could you do that? <laughs> before? I know. I know. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, 